Good morning and welcome to another program of Study the Word. This is brought to you every week by the River Ridge Church of Christ that meets in Newburgh, Indiana. My name is Chuck Bartlett. I'm the minister for the church there. We're glad you've joined us. In a few moments, we're going to be dealing with a Bible question that has come our way, and we hope that you'll stay tuned. There's a couple of things, well, three things I want to remind you of before we get into our question of the week. First of all, we want you folks to participate. We want to thank those who have called in the past. And remember, you can call more than once. You're going to see that phone number come up at the bottom of your screen throughout today's program. That's for you to call and leave a Bible question or a request for a Bible study. And I'll have more to say about that at the end of our program. The other thing I want to remind you of is our radio program. Now this isn't new, but there's something new concerning our weekly radio program. Every Sunday at 2 o'clock we have a live radio program where you can call in your Bible questions. But what's new about it is we are now on FM. Prior to this we were just on AM 1400, but now you can also listen to us on 98.5 on your FM dial. 2 o'clock every Sunday. Now if you're out of the Newburgh Evansville area and you can't pick it up on your radio and you have access to the internet, great. Go to our website, riverridgechurch.org. You can click on there, uh, you can see the icon for you to listen to our program live. Now not only that, the third thing I want to remind you of is we are now streaming our services over the internet live. So if you go there to our website on a Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, you can view our Bible study. At 10 o'clock, you can view our worship service, the same thing for 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday, and Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. Now, of course, we extend to you an invitation to come and be with us and assemble so we can meet you face to face. But folks, if you can't come and be with us, the next best thing, go to our website and view our services and you can study with us uh, as we go into the Word of God. And that's what we're going to do right now. What's our question of the week? Well, it comes from Matthew, the third chapter. And the question is, why was Jesus baptized? Okay, let's look at it. And we're going to stay with the Word of God. And it may be something we talk about throughout the program might stir up another question. Don't forget that phone number and uh, give us a call. All right, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 3, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 13 and read through verse 17. It says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. And when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a, a lightning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. All right. Now I'm going to give you the quick answer that well, I will expand upon in the second half of, the le of our program. The quick answer is, the reason why Jesus was baptized was to fulfill all righteousness. Well, what does that mean? Well, I'll get there in a moment. I think it would be helpful to us to learn some of the things that um, people might misunderstand. So the best thing to do is let's point out clearly why Jesus was not baptized. I mean, some of the reasons why he was not baptized. And we are going to look at the reason why he was baptized in just a few moments. Well, first of all, if we open up our Bibles and go to Hebrews the fourth chapter, 
we are going to learn um, something that I'm sure is not surprising to you, our viewers today, but in connection with our question as to why Jesus was baptized, well, it had nothing to do with the fact that he needed his sins remitted because we read in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and in verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus never sinned, never broke any of God's laws. Therefore, when he came to John to be baptized by him, well, no wonder John was kind of surprised. What? No, I don't want to baptize you. He didn't really want to baptize Jesus. Matter of fact, he says, look, if anything, I need to be baptized by you. So John recognized that there was something different about Jesus because John did baptize people because of their sins. And a lot of people would actually came to, to John to be baptized um, for, the, uh, for the remission of sins or unto the remission of sins. It was, a, it was a valid baptism at one time and I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself and I'll talk about that in a moment. But see, John is recognizing this, that I'm baptizing people who are sinners, and you're coming to be baptized by me? Well, John was right about that. I mean, Jesus did, need, did not need to be baptized for the remission of their sins. Well, there's something else that we notice about Jesus' baptism when he came to John, and, and I'm going to go over to Romans, the sixth chapter, and that he did not get baptized by John to be baptized into himself. See, well, of course he didn't. Well, that's why we need to go to Romans chapter 6 because it talks about people being baptized into Christ. And so we're, we're establishing that Christ's baptism is different than any others. Different from the people that John baptized, different from people who are being baptized today. And so we're covering a wide spectrum of things in our study today, which is why this is a great question. Why was Jesus baptized? Now in Romans chapter 6, he tells us in verse 3, Paul tells the brethren there, Do you not know that as many of us that were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. If we've been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So Jesus was not being baptized into his own death and then rising up in newness of life. Not at all. What John, or excuse me, Paul was talking about over here to these Roman brethren in uh, Romans chapter 6 was, remember when you guys were baptized? And myself, because he used the word we. We were baptized into Christ's death. And we rose up in newness of life, just like when Christ died and resurrected. Now, we're reading about the baptism of John, or excuse me, of Jesus by John back in Matthew, the third chapter, which was close to three years, three and a half years before Jesus even died. So we know that's not, that's not why Christ was baptized. And another reason, Jesus was not being baptized to be born again. Now, the Bible does talk about the necessity of water in the process of being born again. And I'm thinking of the book of John. Let's go over there quickly to John uh, the third chapter, and he talks about this in verse 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Jesus said in verse 5, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so I guess, was that why Jesus was baptized? No, Jesus was not baptized to be born again. That relates to the first point. Jesus was not being baptized for the remission of his sins. He was not separated from his Father at all. And uh, 
And I think that we need to make one more point before we establish, well, just exactly why was it that Jesus was baptized. Well, let's clear one more thing up by going to the book of Acts, the 19th chapter. And I'll tell you what Jesus was not doing on this occasion. He was not being baptized by John to prove to people that John's baptism is something you need to do. Folks, John had been baptizing a lot of people prior to this. And so, that's not why he did it. And we're going to look at some passages that will help clarify that in a moment. And it wasn't to, to tell people that John's baptism was going to be valid for all times. And that's why I'm going to be baptized by John. So, all people from all future generations will know that John's baptism is what we need today. That's not why Jesus was baptized by John. And I know that. Why? Because in Acts chapter 19, we read in verse 1, it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, finding some disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, We have not so much heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. He said to them, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. So that clearly shows us that the baptism of John wasn't going to last for all times. It was only going to last until the death of Jesus, and that's when we are baptized into Christ for the remission of our sins, Acts 2 and verse 38, and, and scores of other passages, and if you want some more information on that, I'll be glad to give it to you. So that's not why Jesus would be, was being baptized by John. So now we're back to the question is, why is baptism, the baptism of Jesus, why did it take place? Um, well, I think we're going to have to go back to our text. And that's the best way to, to deal with this. So we're back in Matthew, the third chapter. And I think there's some things that, that really kind of jump out to us in this text, jump out at us rather, that help us learn some important things. Now remember, it says that Jesus came to be baptized by John. Now that's significant. I think that helps us to learn some things. Jesus was going to be baptized by John. Wait a minute, who's greater? Well, John would tell people that, that Jesus is the Lamb of, of God. He's the great, great or one of the two. He even acknowledged that. Why, wait a minute, I don't need, you don't need to be baptized by, by me, Jesus. I need to be baptized by you. And so John recognizes the greatness of Jesus. And who can question that? Jesus is sinless. He's our Savior. He was God with us, which is Matthew 1 and 21. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. So that's shedding some light on this, folks. You say, well, how's that shedding light? Well, we're learning why is it that Jesus was baptized by John? Why was he baptized? Well, the fact that Jesus had to be baptized by John is demonstrating the humility of Jesus. But more so, I think there's a more important lesson here, and it's in verse 15. Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. And so in other words, Jesus told John, we need to fulfill all righteousness. Did you, did you catch that little word there? He says, it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. John, this includes you. The two of us have a role in this. You baptizing me and me being baptized by you. Well, where did this all come from? I'll tell you where this came from. This was the will of the Father. 
Over there in, in Hebrews, the, the 10th chapter, um, the Hebrew writer makes reference to the idea that this is why Jesus came. Hebrews chapter 10, we pick it up in verse 7. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Let me read about that over in Matthew 26. Jesus prayed in the garden, Not my will, but thy will be done. Remember Luke chapter 2, folks, when Jesus was but a lad, 12 years old, and, and he told his parents, Mary and Joseph, that I must be about my father's business. So when we think about why Jesus was baptized by John, well, the first thing that needs to come to mind is that it was the will of his father. He did the will of his father. And so when we're trying, trying to figure out, well, what's the meaning of it? Um, why did he need to get baptized? Why did the father want him to be baptized? And it said, well, to fulfill all righteousness. This is something that Jesus wanted to, to do to please his father. And not only that, folks, as we get back to the previous point, it shows the willingness to submit, to, submit, to humble, to obey. Folks, that's what we're supposed to do today. I don't know how many times I have been in a Bible study where people have said to me that, hey, if baptism has anything to do with salvation, I don't want it. I'm not doing it. And I'm thinking to myself, look, we're just to obey God. If God asks me to do this, I'm going to do it. No matter what he asks me to do, I am to do it. And Jesus is teaching us that lesson. I am here to do my Father's will. What people have problems with is, is the why. Why do I have to do this? See, John had to be convinced of that, didn't he? Wait a minute, I don't want to baptize you. Why, why do you want me to baptize you? John, it's so that we can fulfill all righteousness, so that we can do the will of the Father. This is the right thing to do. We know it was the right thing to do because of what followed. Remember? It says in verse 16 of Matthew 3, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and aligning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So here it is. Doing what the, our Father wants, what his Father wanted. It's all about placing the Father. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith, it's impossible to please God. We are here to please the Father. And I think, folks, I think there's something else that comes into play here. And if we go to the book of John, the Gospel according to John, the, the first chapter, I think there's some information here that sheds some light on this. You know, again, as to why was Jesus baptized. Um, let's pick it up in verse 29 of John chapter 1. The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Oh, wow, this just really clarifies a lot of things pertaining to the baptism of Jesus. It wasn't to prove that John's baptism was from God. Not at all. John already knew that it was from God. John mentioned it right here. That's what he says. Now, now let, me, let me read this again. He said in verse 3, 33, I did not know him. Remember, he's talking about the one that came to him. That was Jesus. But he who sent me, who was that? The Father. He who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the Spirit descending, that's the one. That's the Son of God. 
So what John is saying that to the people there, look, um, this is the one that's preferred before me. I baptized him. I was told that by the Father in heaven that he's going to be come, that he is going to come, and I'm going to baptize him. So John already knew that his baptism that that he was performing was was God approved. It came from above. Matter of fact, if you'll remember, on one occasion, and uh, I don't want to just lead you to to try to find it on your own. Let me see if I can find it here quickly. But it does remind me, and I, I was thinking that it was over here in Matthew 21, and it is. It reminded me of this, because of uh, an incident with Jesus in questioning his authority. In verse 23 of Matthew 21, it reads, Now when he, that's Jesus, came into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? And Jesus answered and said to them, I will also ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? And they reason among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude, for all count John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Jesus uses an example about John's baptism. And he asked them, The baptism of John, from heaven or from men? That's the point. The baptism of John came from God. And that's what he mentioned over there in John the first chapter. And so another reason that was pointed out there for the baptism of uh, Jesus by John was so that John would also know that this is Jesus, the Christ. Uh, because he said, I did not know him. But the one who sent me, which was the Father above, says when you do baptize him, you're going to see the Spirit descend upon him. And John's telling the crowd there, I saw that. And did, isn't that what we read over there in Matthew, the third chapter? It said immediately the heavens were opened to him, and he, John, uh, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lying upon him. So John witnessed this. And John's job was trying to teach people about Jesus. Remember, prepare the way? And that's what we read over there in Acts the 19th chapter. When, when Paul ran into people who were baptized under John's baptism, and people shouldn't have been teaching it at that time because Jesus had already died and ascended back into heaven, and so the baptism of John was no more. Now we have the baptism of Christ, that we're to be baptized into Christ for the remission of our sins, to be born again, to become a Christian. And in Acts chapter 19, they were pointed out there that, no, no, you do not have John's baptism anymore. You need to be baptized into Christ. And that's significant, folks, because that really helps us clearly understand the question that we've been spending time talking about today, the baptism of Jesus. Why? why? Why was he baptized? And we noticed and established that his baptism was not for the same reasons we're baptized. Some similarities. What do you mean? Well, the word baptism. The word baptism means to immerse. John took Jesus and he baptized him. He had to submit. And that's part of our obedience. We have to submit to the will of God. We need to humble ourselves. And John needed to do his job. There was a lesson there for John too, was there not? See, it wasn't for just Jesus to, to um, submit himself to the, the lesser. In other words, that would be John. But John needed to know that, no, no, you need to do this. Even though Jesus was greater than John, John, why are you doing this? Because that's what God wants. And folks, we can say that we're clothed with humility and say, oh, I just, I just don't feel worthy to, to baptize somebody. Or, or somebody says that, well, I don't want them to baptize me. Folks, we're leaving God out of the equation. We just need to do His will. And remember, nobody... 
today can have their sins remitted unless they're baptized into Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. Acts 22 and verse 16. 1 Peter 3.21 Baptism does also now save us. But remember, just like in John's time, you know, John ran into people that just wanted to go through the motions. And people today who just want to go through the motions of being baptized, they might just go down a dry center and come up a wet center if their heart's not right. There are prerequisites. There are things you need to do first. John ran into this even with his baptism. Over there in Matthew chapter 3, same passage, we find that people were coming to him. And um, let's pick it up in verse 7. He says, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath of come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. What are you doing here getting baptized? You need to get your heart right. And that's what we learn over there in Acts chapter 8. The Ethiopian says, there's water. What hinders me from being baptized? Things can hinder you. You still go through the motions and say, well, let me just get baptized and maybe later on I'll get my heart right. No, 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 no. You first need to believe in Jesus Christ and repent of your sins. Turn and follow Him. Confess Him with your mouth. And then you can be baptized for the remission of your sins. And then serve God faithfully. Um, if you have any questions about how to become a Christian, we'll send you a free DVD on that. All our programs are saved on DVD, and we send copies of them out to people who request them at no charge. And so you can request a copy of this program or any of our past programs. You might be thinking, Chuck, I don't even know what your past programs were all about. Well, I'll send you a list of all the questions of all our different programs we have done in the past. I'll send you a list. You can look at them all and say, wow, there's one that interests me. Well, just check that one off and, and let me know and, and, and I'll check the archives and I'll make a copy of that and I'll send it to you. We just want to help you to become familiar with the Word of God. And I hope our Bible study today about the baptism of Jesus not only, you, not only helped you learn about why Jesus was baptized, but we learned about John's baptism and we learned about the baptism that's valid today. And we want to just help you to become familiar with the truth because as Jesus said, the truth sets you free. John chapter 8 and verse 32. And I'll tell you one of the biggest things that sets you free from. Error. False ideas. Truth gives you stability, folks. That's why we want you to keep asking questions. And I want to thank you for participating. All you folks who have submitted questions. We've had people last week who enrolled in our free home Bible study course. We mail it out to you. If you want that, folks, please give us a call. There's no charge for any of this. Just call, leave your name and address, and I'll get that first lesson out to you. We hope you'll be back here next Sunday at 10 o'clock. Set your DVR if you have to. Tell your friends and your neighbors about this program. And please, we extend to you a warm invitation to come and assemble with us at the River Ridge Church of Christ that meets at 3 Sharon Place, right in the heart of Newburgh. And folks, may it always be our desire to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Have yourselves a great day. Thank you.